Good morning. Hello and welcome to Manitowoc Ice Webcast. Of course, it might not be the morning where you're at if you're in a different part of the world. So good day to you. And welcome to another Manitowoc Ice Service Webcast Training. We are so happy we can bring you this webcast training today. And we are going to be talking about quiet cube ice machines today. What's a quiet cube ice machine? Wait, wait, wait a second. I, I'm hearing from this cube. I wish he would speak up a little because he's a little quiet. No, that's not quite a quiet cube ice machine today. A quiet cube ice machine basically means that you have the compressor outside so there's no noise coming from that ice machine. Today after the webcast, should take about an hour today. Today after the webcast, we're going to do a little quiz to see how much you learned. So we'll do a little question and answer session as well today. You can answer Q and A's on the live webcast up there at the top. There's a little question mark up there if you want to ask a question. And I got Will here helping me today and he can transfer those questions over to me and ask them out live. So if you have a question, feel free to ask those questions. This is all about you, these webcasts for you here at Manitowoc. So at the end of today, like I was saying, there'll be a quiz that you can take online. So pay attention today. I want to see you get top scores. It's not a pass fail quiz. It's just to reinforce what you've learned already today. So try and just leave just a little bit time at the end to do that quiz. And then when you've submitted the quiz with your email, be careful how you write your email in there, then you will get a certificate of completion within 24 hours and you'll also get a copy of this presentation so you can have it for a future which is very important because you're not going to remember any of this stuff if you don't work on a quiet cube for about a year from now so it's important to have that literature at your disposal so we're going to do that at the end of the quiz today uh, after this webcast and then will come that nice beautiful certificate of achievement that you can show off to your friends and family and our agenda today is going to look like this for June, we're going to look at the Indigo NXT overview, the Quiet Cube installation of that ice machine, installation wizard. We're going to go through that live on the screen here today with an ice machine that I have in our studio. We'll do menu navigation as well, and we'll do sequence of operation, how that machine goes through its sequence of operation, and then we'll close out. So by the end of this, webcast you'll learn about the indigo nxt quiet cube ice machine and how it works and how it functions and how it's supposed to be installed we're not doing any kind of troubleshooting today this is more of an installation uh and then a, a use of that machine as well for you today so indigo nxt quiet cube ice machines the model number includes the refrigerant type some have rotary compressors on them today as well We'll look at some configurations and we'll take a look at this ice probe real quick. So here's that letter that designates the type of refrigerant in that ice machine. Why is that important? Because we used to just make ice machines with one kind of refrigerant. Not anymore. We use multiple refrigerants in our manufacturing for the model of the ice machine. So it could have 410A in it. It may have some 404A in it you know, it could be a little bit different. So the T on this model number designates that this one is R410A, as you see on that guideline down there. 410A on this one. If it was an F, that would mean it's R404A on that ice machine. Another fairly recent update is compressor changes. You may or may not know, but Bristol stopped manufacturing compressors shortly a while ago. And they didn't have replacements. They just said, no more compressors, Manitowoc. We're really sorry. So we had to find replacement compressors for these models, which is a harder task than you may think it could be. So we have an A on the end of the model number if it has an alternative compressor in it. And then we also have um, some other letters like an E on the end of it too for alternative compressors on those ice machines. So be careful now about your compressor ordering because if you don't look at that last letter after that 261 or 263 number, you might end up with the wrong compressor because Bristol do not produce 
compressors for us anymore at this stage. Alternative compressors that we came up with, we wanted to make this nice and easy on you. I'm sure you've all been to installations where you're changing a compressor out and the tubes are completely in the wrong place on the compressor and you have to retube everything. Well, we didn't want to make it that hard for you, so we included a tubing kit on the compressors that were very different on their tubing configurations. Some of the compressors were really close to where the tubing came out as we worked on it, and we didn't need a tubing kit on those ones, but some will need a tubing kit. So we have tubing kit part numbers on there as well. So you can see Bristol's there could be changing to a Copeland or Embraco, and you'd need a tubing kit. If you're changing from a Bristol to Bristol, we do still have some Bristol's in stock, and we'll use those stock up before they're depleted uh, on those units. You wouldn't need a tubing kit, Copeland to Copeland, and Braco to Braco, Samson to Samson. So you'd only need a tubing kit for the Bristol to Copeland or in Braco compressors. Copeland and Braco, basically the same thing. It's just a parent company of Copeland is in Braco. Sometimes they have different names on them. And you can see some of the tubing kits down there. So very important when you're changing a compressor to see if you need that tubing kit. So we got in our quiet cube little family here, 22 inch wide quiet cubes and 30 inch wide quiet cubes in our family. 30 inch wide head sections and IBs as quiet cube remotes. And then you can see the condenser is outdoor something somewhere with that compressor. Again, why bother? Why even bother on a quiet cube putting that compressor outside? Why don't we just do it like we did in the old days uh, and we still do today because as drive throughs became more popular and people were in the drive throughs on their headsets and they wanted an ice machine right at the drive through right next to their headset, they wanted to eliminate that noise from the drive through So we move that compressor outdoors to eliminate the noise from it. So drive throughs firstly. Secondly, would be dine-in areas. So your fast food restaurant or your quick serve restaurant where a comp an ice machine is actually in the dining room for self-serve soda where people eat. They don't want that noisy compressor in there. It's kind of distracting. So again, we could move that compressor outside and get all that noise away from the ice machine. So that's why quiet cube ice machines exist. Some people, you know, they don't think to ask why they even exist out there. Ice thickness probe. We did an ice thickness probe update to this quiet cube ice machine and all our ice machines. And you'll see there are new tabs on the ice probe. Uh, I'm going to see if I can um, ooh, if I can emphasize this just a little bit for you. Let's use a red pen. There's a red pen. So can you see that there is new tabs on this probe? And the reason there's new tabs is if you look at these two ears that stick out the probe, you'll notice, and people don't always notice this. This is why I'm pointing out one ear is longer than the other ear. So when you take an ice probe out, you're supposed to squeeze the short ear out first and then slide the one out on the right. And people don't do that a lot. They, they don't realize and they squeeze the big ear and it used to break the ice probe. So we put some bumpers in there or some tabs in there so that couldn't happen. But when you're taking one of these out as a tip view, squeeze the left ear out first and then just slide the ice probe out all right not many people know about that um, but it's very prevalent on that machine here's another look at that at that little bump in there the molded plastic stop on that machine uh, on that unit on that ice thickness probe for you little molded stop and i'm gonna i'm gonna get rid of my uh animations here yeah i have two ice probes here I have the original ice probe uh, without the tab. I don't have the updated one with me today. I'm going to get rid of that sink and get rid of that sink. But you can see the um, original ice probe here. And I don't know if you can tell, but this ear is just a little bit longer than this ear on the other side. So people would squeeze this one in. And if and I might break this if there wasn't a tab there, they'd squeeze it so far past that it would break this. So we put the bumpers in so that couldn't happen on it and breaking that tab off in there, right? So we did that so that that couldn't happen. Thanks, Will. 
So we got plastic stops on our ice thickness probe. So we looked at model numbers. We looked at some configurations just to get things down and get you up to speed with what's going on today. We looked at an ice probe thickness update on those units as well. So hopefully that helps you out a bit. Let's take a look at some installation now. So we got a nice example here of two indoor machines. The one on the left is a regular quiet cube ice machine. And the one on the right, we call this an IB ice machine or ice beverage. That's what IB stands for. And the IB was designed to go on a beverage tower. So the ice machine on the left, it could sit on a bin or a hotel dispenser, or it could sit on a beverage tower, but it would take up a lot of space on the beverage tower. The one on the right, an IB, was designed just to go on a beverage tower. So that makes it kind of unique. And then outdoors somewhere, you've got the condensing unit for this ice machine. New for the Indigo Next ice machines, or for all the Indigo Next, is there is no interconnecting wiring between indoors and outdoors. On Indigo ice machines, there was a 24 volt thermostat wire that went between indoors and outdoors. We do not have that on the Indigo Next ice machines, okay? So there's no interconnecting wiring in that system. Why do I make a big deal out of that? Well, maybe you order a line set and you notice there's some thermostat wire in that line set, and you're like, what, where does this thermostat wire go? It's the same line set as the Indigo ice machine, um, but you can discard that thermostat wire in the line set if you're installing an Indigo Next ice machine. Indigo ice machine, you're going to need that thermostat wire. Voltage, this always confuses people. So the condenser gets its own voltage, and the ice machine indoors gets its own voltage as well. So there's a nice little data play in the installation page that shows you the amperage those machines are supposed to get. Indoor ice machine gets maybe a, a cord going into it, plug it into an outlet, and it needs some strain relief on it. Uh, in fact, all you're really running on the indoor unit is a water pump and a few solenoid valves. So it's really not pulling much amperage at all on that indoor unit on the ice machine. Make sure it's got good grounds on it and an install loose grounds, floating grounds, <laughs> a really old building with just poor grounding system is going to mess up your control system on that ice machine. Back up outside, maybe on the roof, maybe outdoors, uh, on the condenser. We made a few improvements on this condenser now. Uh, we made this panel bigger that the tubing could go through, that lower panel, um, there was kind of a cutout there that was real small that you could put the tubing through if you wanted to, but we made that panel much bigger and easier to access to run that tubing through because a lot of people run the tubing on the outside, which is okay. You could do that and they come in on that grill part of it, but it would cover up that electrical box and make it really difficult to work in. So we wanted to encourage people to use that side access panel for your tubing to go in there and then a disconnect. We placed a label on the condenser telling you where to put the disconnect because I used to see a lot of electricians mount the disconnect right on the corner of the machine and it made it very difficult to take the electrical panel off with that disconnect hanging there. So we put another label on that talking about where to mount a disconnect on that outdoor condensing unit. Here's a nice look at that. You can see this nice big panel now. Uh, with two screws on it, it comes off nice and easy to run your tubing into instead of just those little circular holes that used to be there um, on that machine for running tubes in the side of it if you wanted to take that route. Trying to encourage people to stay away to, from that electrical panel and, and stop running tubing in front of it and making it awkward for a service technician to work on that condenser there. Back of the ice machine, pretty standard with the other Indigo Next. We have a nice labeling system up there to try and make it nice and easy. Water in for ice making. Drain lines, and I say drain lines, so you've got ice making drain line, and then you have a base drain line, which people kind of not really familiar with, but it's been there for a long time, and it's to collect condensation inside the ice machine. The compressor might be sweating and drain that condensation out of the machine, especially with all these rotary compressors, 
Uh, they have accumulators on them built in. So there's a chance that you get more condensation in that machine on self-contained units where the compressor's inside the ice machine. I don't want to confuse you, compressor's outside, but there's still chance of the suction line condensating in this quiet cube. And there's a molded channel in the bottom of the unit that catches that and drains it out on that base drain. So just be aware that base drain is there. You don't need to vent the base drain, but you do need to vent the ice making drain on that machine. Floor drains. People miss this a good bit. It's very important to have an air gap between the floor drain and the drain line of the ice machine. The reason being, because basically that floor drain is like connected to a sewer drain, ugh, and we don't want stuff growing out of that floor drain up the drain lines into the ice machine. We want an air gap so stuff can't grow up those drain lines. Each county or country, they have their own codes about this, how big the air gap has to be, so check with your code, but make sure there's some kind of air gap between the floor drain and the drain line. You know, if you've got a drain line at a certain location that just seems to get being blocked up all the time, like every six months you're back there blowing it out again, see if there's an air gap on the floor drain. See if something's growing up that drain line and making it get blocked up because that happens all too commonly uh, in the industry. Proper installation. You don't need breathing room for these ice machines to breathe because the condenser's on the roof or outside somewhere but you do need access for service, right? So we try and ensure, it doesn't always happen, of course, we guideline all of our customers and our installers to put those adequate clearances on there for service accents. So it's not shoved up in a ceiling somewhere and you can't take the top panel off. I'm sure you've all been in that situation before. I know I have. Um, and five inches on the back, five inches on the side, five inches at the top, adequate clearance for service work on that ice machine. IBs, a quick look at an IB, maybe it's in a drive through five inches on the back, eight inches on the side, two inches on the top for an IB ice machine for clearance on it. Let's take a look at a proper install for the condenser too. If you're downtown in the city somewhere and roof space is maybe a premium or outdoor space, they might be tempted or you might be tempted to stack these units on top of each other. Uh, but we need 24 inches of clearance on top, 48 inches on the back, and 48 inches of the side on clearance to let that condenser reject its heat and not get choked to death in the summer months, that's for sure. Disconnect mounted up on that condenser unit. We kind of talked about that before, but here's a reminder. There's a label there that says mount disconnect here to try and help you out uh, and try and keep my service guy not swearing while he's up on the roof trying to get to that electrical panel that somebody mounted a disconnect on. And the removable panel, you can run the tubing through there. You can absolutely run that tubing in sideways into this unit to make it easier to service too instead of running it in the front all the time. Nice straight refrigeration lines going up here, straight into the condenser. Follow the installation guidelines on them, but we want to see them as short as possible. You've got a suction line and a liquid line coming on this unit. Uh, interestingly enough, that suction line and in liquid line are both insulated when they come through. Suction line is going to be a little bit bigger than the liquid line on this line set for it. And we're looking for a maximum run of 100 feet. So 100 feet maximum run, and that could consist of a max of a 35 foot rise if the condenser is above the ice machine, or if it's below, sometimes it's below, 15 foot maximum drop on that line set. So 35 foot rise, 15 foot drop. I get the feeling that might be in your quiz today, so just pay attention to that one, just a guess. And zero to 20 foot of rise, you don't need a refrigeration trap, okay? Let's, let's talk about that. Refrigeration land, world, when you run a suction line vertically, you have to put a trap in it sometimes to get adequate oil return when the compressor's above the evaporator. Uh, and we're gonna say 20 
feet or above needs a trap on it. So 21 feet, 20 and a half feet needs a trap. Less than 20 feet, no trap required on that machine. Uh, you can buy a trap from us. We have pre-made traps, or you can bend a trap as well uh, on that machine, but at over 20 feet, we've got to have a trap in there for that unit. Shorten that line set as necessary. Avoid unwanted traps. We only need one on there. We don't want to see like 60 traps on there because you coiled the pipe set up. Or the installer coiled the pipe set up. And don't deviate from the required OD on there. Why would I why would I say that? Don't don't deviate from the OD. Well, the liquid line's pretty big. You know, a lot of times you might be used to seeing a 3.8 liquid uh, on an ice machine on a refrigeration system. And this one might have a 5.8 liquid line on it. And you're gonna be like, holy cow, that's a big liquid line. I don't need that big a liquid line. And you might be tempted to step it down. Don't, because actually that liquid line becomes a hot gas line, a hot discharge gas line when it goes into harvest. That's why it's oversized for a liquid line on that ice machine. So this one is going to be brazed in. So refrigeration tube connections are going to be brazed in at the condenser and at the ice machine. We're going to purge nitrogen in our refrigeration lines when we braze, of course, that stops oxidization from forming on the inside. So not much, maybe like two, three PSI, just a little bit of nitrogen purging through there with somewhere to escape while you braze it so it doesn't oxidize on the inside of the tubing while you're brazing it. Wrap those rags with a wet rag. Uh, keep the O-rings from melting when you're brazing onto those lines. So keep the O-rings from melting when you're brazing on this. So wrap them with a nice little wet rag, some wet paper towel. Outside on the condensing unit, you can see we've got two caps just soldered on there or brazed on there. We're going to cut those caps off, okay? There's a nitrogen charge in this condenser when it ships. So don't, don't heat those caps up to pull them off because they're going to fly across the roof. Um, don't do that. Cut those caps off with a tubing cutter so you get a nice clean connection on there. You're going to braze into those. You can see that suction filter on that suction line right there. And remember, that's a suction filter, not a suction filter dryer, as you may be used to calling it. But it's just a suction filter. It does not absorb any moisture. So that's standard on this condensing unit, the suction filter. It actually protects debris from going in the accumulator. So here's another look at my valves. I've got little back seat, front seat, hexagonal valves on there. Once we've got our tubes brazed on, we're going to pressure test it, 150 PSI nitrogen. And we can remove the cores to make this a little faster when we put our vac pump on it and pull it down to 500 microns or less on that system. So we're going to back those tubing out when we've when we've done them and then we're going to open the valves up. No need to add any refrigerant to this system. Refrigerant is pre-charged in the condenser in the head section of the ice machine. It's all in the receiver in the head section of the ice machine and it's pre-charged. So no need to add refrigerant to the line set or the condenser. We're going to pull a good vacuum once we got a good vacuum down, we're going to take those little hexagonal caps off there, and then we're going to wind out the hex key or hex nut behind that cap to open the valves up. And you're going to hear refrigerant rush through those valves a little bit. Um, but also, you've got to energize the liquid line solenoid valve to hear all that refrigerant come out of that receiver on that machine. And that's going to happen when you push the on off button and you start making ice on there and that liquid line opens and all your refrigerant is going to rush through that system uh, on your machine. So here's a nice little look at the overall section of that tubing. And you can see we have a trap on our suction line. Let's turn my pen on, make a mess of this. You can see we have a trap on that suction line when it's over 20 feet. And then we have our liquid line on the other side here. This is my liquid line coming down on that machine. You can see I have a receiver. This is where all the refrigerant is stored when the machine ships in my receiver. And we have a liquid line solenoid valve holding that refrigerant back. So that refrigerant is not going to move until this solenoid valve gets energized. 
uh, when the machine's powered up. And then we also have our two valves on the back of that indoor ice machine on that, ooh, on that section holding the refrigerant back too, right? So nice little setup, easy to install, pre-charged, no need to add refrigerant charge to that ice machine, uh, and we should be good to go. Get rid of my ink here, there we go. All right, so we looked at, we, we looked at, we don't use interconnecting wiring anymore on Indigo Next. We look at some installations, we look at some proper line set sizes, and the reminders are in your installation book that comes with the machine and your service tech manual too. The installation will be in there as well. We get a lot of problems with ice machines that weren't installed correctly. So if you're on a service call, maybe you're not an installer, but you're on a service call, this is a very useful webcast because you, because you can see what the installation is supposed to be. See if they made a mistake on that refrigeration setup. All right, so I'm imagining I'm installing this machine now. I got my head unit in place. I got my condenser in place. I've run my line sets. Um, I've pulled a good vacuum. I've opened up my valves now. So now I'm ready to plug my head unit in and get to the installation wizard on this ice machine. So I'm going to plug it in the wall and I'm going to get a little window come up like this and we'll go through the installation wizard next. Um, we'll, we'll take a look on this machine right here, the installation wizard and see what that looks like, okay? So I'm going to reset this one. As I come over to the machine, Will's going to follow me over and zoom in on it a little. I'm going to open the door just to make it a little bit easier for you to see. And I'm going to set this up like it's a new machine. So I'm going to do a factory reset on this one. So I'm just going to press factory reset. And I'm going to press the button that says require a installation wizard setup. So this is how it will look when you power that machine up. So I get to pick my language. So I'm not going to make my life too difficult. <laughs> I'm going to pick English today. And then I'm going to click start wizard on this as well. So in I come, I'm going to press start wizard on this machine. And it says check in for a valid model number. It found a valid model number in it. And it's going to ask me if I want the date format changed. So I'm going to go for month, day, year, and 12 hour. Month, day, year, 12 hour. That looks good to me. If you're in a different country, you might want day, month, year. But if you're in the United States, you're more used to month, day, year. So that looks good. So I'm going to press the right arrow button on that. And then I'm going to set time of day right here in Wisconsin right now. This clock's just a little bit off. It's 928 right now. So I'm going to adjust this. I'm just going to press my little down arrow here and set it to 928 just for an example for you. And we are in the AM, so that's good. So I'm going to press the right arrow button. And then we're going to be looking at the day. I've got 615 2021 which is today, right? I'm just going to double check that. 6.15. Yep, that's today, Tuesday 6.15. So that looks good. So I'm going to press the right arrow on that. And then, interestingly, it's going to auto detect any accessories. In the old days of Indigo, before the Indigo Next, you would have to manually tell it if it got accessories added to it or not. This one, you don't have to do that. It's plug and play accessories. So if I have an optional bin level sensor accessory, it's going to tell me that it's detecting one. If I have a luminize UV um, to get rid of bacteria in this ice machine, it's going to tell me that. If I have an automatic cleaning system, it's going to tell me that. So mine doesn't have any of those on it. I don't have any of those accessories on our example in the studio today. So they're just going to have red X's on it. If it did have them installed, and there was a red X by it, I could be like, uh oh, I did not install my accessory properly somehow because it's not auto detecting it. So I'm going to press the right arrow because my accessories look good. And then it's going to ask me if I want to configure it manually or configure it um, with a USB on this ice machine. So we'll just look at through a few accessories real quick. 
You can have a Luminize 2 accessory added to this machine. You can have an ice cube level sensor. If you want the ice to be lower in the bin than it is when it goes off on a curtain, then you're going to have an ice level sensor. Interestingly, IB or ice beverage units, they come with an ice level sensor as standard because they know they're going to be on a soda dispenser and they know we want the ice level a little bit lower in a soda dispenser than we do in a bin application. And then it's going to say import or configure manually or configure using a USB. B. Now, most of the time, you're just going to configure it manually. But if you were doing a lot of these machines and you were setting them up all the same way, let's say it's like a new casino or something, and they've got like 40 ice machines in this place, and you have to be the one to set them all up, you could set that setup on the first one, and you could save it on your USB, and then you could just go to each different machine and set it up um, with your USB, and it'd be faster for you. But I'm just going to do manual on this one. And we're going to get metric or standard system. And I'm going to go with standard, which uses Fahrenheit, pounds, and gallons on it. So we're going to stick with that one and press the right arrow. And then it's going to ask me my brightness sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and I can adjust this brighter or lower. I'm sorry, brighter or less bright. I'm going to go for full brightness on this one. So when it comes out of standby screen mode or wake up mode, like when you touch your phone, I'm going to have a really bright screen on it uh, on this machine. And then I'm going to press the right arrow again. And you can see I've got a couple of ice program configurations. Now, 90% of the time or maybe more, people are going to just use continuous mode, which means I'm going to make ice nonstop until I go off on full bin. This one also has a time program where you can tell it to run at certain times of the day. That's standard. Weight program where you can tell it to make a certain amount of ice on each day. And then this new one, which is really cool, called night off program, which is kind of designed for a hotel where they don't want it to run at nighttime because it's next to a guest room. So I could do a night program on this machine as well if I wanted to. I'm going to keep it on continuous. And I've got a cleaning reminder I could set up here. Uh, cleaning reminder is on every six months right now and sanitizers are on every six months. So every six months, I'm going to get a reminder for cleaning and sanitizing. I'm just going to switch these two off for now, just so you can see what that looks like. I would leave them on installing because I want my customer to be reminded in six months that it needs cleaning and it's just going to get a reminder on the screen. It's going to keep making ice, it's not going to shut down or anything like that, but it's going to give them a reminder. Then I have um, set monthly interval on the air filter cleaning. So we did cleaning reminders, we did an air filter, and I have this to remind my customer to clean their air filter on the back of the machine every month. Now, if it's a CVD machine, it knows it doesn't have an air filter. So you won't even see this screen for a CVD on the ice machine because it knows that model number doesn't have an air filter because the condenser's outside where there is no air filter. This is not CVD, this is just a standard. And then we're going to talk a little bit about water filters, which is kind of cool after the air filter. And it says, do you have a water filter installed on the outside of the machine? I'm going to say yes. OK, so I'm going to say yes. And then it's going to say, do you have an Arctic Pure water filter? So do you have a Manitowoc ice machine water filter? And if you don't, that's fine. But if you have one of ours, it knows exactly when that water filter is going to get blocked up on it. So I'm going to say yes, I do have a Manitowoc Arctic Pure. And then it's going to ask me what kind of Arctic Pure filter do you have installed on this? Do you have uh, an AR Pre with an AR10,000, an AR Pre with an AR20,000, an AR Pre with an AR40,000 uh, on it as well? And I'm just going to go with the 20,000. There we go. And then I get a nice little thank you note that we are set up and ready to go. So I'm going to press the right arrow button. And it's going to ask me about um, water on this. What kind of water did you use? Do you use RO water? 
Um, we can set you to use less water in this machine uh, if you're using RO. And I'm going to say, no, I'm just, I've just got standard water. I don't have anything fancy on it. So I'm going to use factory defaults for water. And then I get a nice little message. Congratulations. Setup wizard is complete. Turn on the ice machine. So I'm going to press home. And then it's going to say machine off. And all I have to do is press the power button. And we're in business on this ice machine. So that's my easy setup wizard on this ice machine. Nice and easy to set up uh, for that ice machine. I'm going to turn this off for a second. There we go. And I'm going to go back to my desk, show you a couple of other things we did as well. Some people were worried that the setup might be too complicated for a customer. I know sounds kind of crazy, huh? but they said that might be too complicated for a customer. So if they don't want to do that, when the setup wizard comes up, if they just press the power button, it will start making ice in default mode. And they can say, hey, when my technician comes in, go through the setup mode. It will force you to go through the setup wizard um, when you try and do anything on the screen. But if they just like, I don't know what all this stuff is. I'm kind of panicked about it. They can just press the power button and it will make ice on them. So a little bit different on the setup for that machine. All right. All right. Easy touch setup wizard reset like you saw me do in the first place. Why would we want to do that? Well, maybe. Maybe it's in, been in like a showroom or a show or something and somebody set it up, but then a customer bought it for like a discount and we want it to go through the setup wizard when they install it. So we can do a require setup wizard and then when you unplug the machine, the next time it gets plugged in, it's going to require you to do a setup wizard. So that works pretty good. Um, reset factory defaults. If like a customer has been playing around in there and it's all messed up, you can do a reset factory defaults and we can take a quick look at that. Reset the factory defaults is going to reset it to English month, day, year, Fahrenheit, gallons, turn the ice clarity off. LCD brightness to a standard um, on that machine, shuts off all the reminders, uh, puts the water filter change out to auto, and contact information is the service locator, which is an auto default, which I'll show you on that as well. And then you can press the left arrow twice and require setup wizard, and it's back to needing that setup wizard when you go back in and install it. So a few simple steps there to get your Mantok ice machine set up. Again, you, I would be thinking, well, why did they do all this? What's the point in all this setup? Well, people, you know, they buy this Manitowoc ice machine and it's got so many good features that they're just not aware of. So when you first power it up and you put it, plug it in, it asks you to, to those questions if you want those setup features in there because people just miss them. They, they would call here and say, hey, is there a timer I can buy? to make this machine turn off at night and run in the day. And I'm like, why would you do that? It's already in the machine, you know? It's already got those programs. So going through those setup, just like when you buy a new phone and you go through a setup on it uh, to give you some options and kind of configure it to you, same kind of thing on this touch screen for you, okay? So we talked about setup wizard, reminders, configurations, auto detection on the accessories, which is a really nice feature. And we're going to take a look at some menu navigation now, OK? So we're going to take a look at this menu. We'll look a little bit on the screen, and I'll go over to the ice machine as well, maybe, and take a look at it too. Um, software updates. We do a lot of software updates. We're actually on software 9.1 now. If you want to write that down, 9.1 software version on that machine. But 9.2 is coming really soon. Thanks, Will. Uh, so we're up to 9.1 right now, live on our website, and 9.2 is coming really soon. You know what I like about 9.1 is it has a clean history on it. It's, so you can actually press the service menu, and it'll tell you how many times it's been cleaned in its lifetime, and it'll tell you the dates of the last cleaning. So you know, if you go into an ice machine and you say, when was the last time it was cleaned? And they say, oh, we clean it every week, and you're like, it doesn't look like it's cleaned every week. I wonder if they're like, doing something wrong to clean it. It'll go in there and tell you the history of how many times it's been through a clean program on that ice machine. So look at the display here. 
You can see everything's fired up on that display right now. We got a little envelope telling us it's time to do something. We got a triangle that tells us something's wrong and you just touch those icons to see what it is. The S is a sanitation light or a luminized light. It used to just be blue or red. Uh, now with a software update, you touch it and it tells you what that blue or red means for the status of it. It might mean you need to change the UV bulb because uh, it's getting old and it's not doing a good job anymore. We have an AUX system, iAUX, that little picture of the iAUX. If it has one plugged into it, there'd be an icon there for the iAUX. If there isn't one plugged into it, there'll be no icon there on that machine. Keypad locks. So those top three buttons are behind the door. Because if it's in a public area, you don't want people just turn it on and off just to be annoying. Um, and you might not want to messing with the touchscreen as well. So you can lock the touchscreen out. And a nice big orange padlock comes up, letting you know that touchscreen is locked out. Clean buttons behind the door too on that ice machine. So I'm going to press the lock button. Lock is going to go away. Now I have access to the menu and I press the information button. And you can tell me, tell it's, you can see it's, it's displaying model number, ice machine serial number, condenser serial number if it's got one up on the outside. Capacity, how much ice it makes in a day. Installation date, manufacture date, warranty date left. Main software version, a graphic software version. You can see this one is 8 point something. And like I said, we're on 9.1 right now. Uh, and 9.2 is coming really soon on our software updates, all right? So if you out there today and you're looking at an 8 point something, that's old software. Get it updated to have the best, latest, most amazing software on this machine that you can have, okay? All right, menu map. There's a menu map on the back of the door here. Tells you how to navigate around in there. You probably won't need it because you're a really smart technician. But if you get lost or you're like, how do I get to that? There's a nice little menu map in there on that ice machine. So alert log, if you get an alert, all you do is press it and it tells you what the problem was. This one has got a long freeze and a long harvest on it. Now, if I press that on the touch screen, it'll tell me, oh, this one's tripped on a long freeze 12 times. And the last trip, it was first of the first of 2018 on that machine. So it can tell me what's going on. I'm going to go over back to the machine and see what this one is doing. OK, I don't have a little triangle on my screen. I don't have a little triangle on my screen because my one's been doing OK lately, but I can still look at my alert log so I can go menu. Service alert log and I can look at my alert log on this one. I have a power loss and it looks like I have a Sorry if I'm getting in the way, a water fault. So if I press my power loss, it tells me I had a power loss, 20 of them, and the last one was on, looks like uh, May 1st, if I can see that quite right. May 1st on there. I'm trying not to put my head too far in the way for you. Uh, I can go back. Looks like I had a water problem here too. Water fault. And it looks like my water fault system occurred on uh, 8.31 a.m. on the 11th of May. If I'm reading that right, and it tripped three times on that display. So I'm going to go back out of this, okay? I don't have any reminders programmed into this one, so I don't have an envelope. But these are some of the reminders you could look at. Clean ice machine, sanitize ice machine, clean the air filter. Change the water filter reminders that can come up on the screen to let you know what's going on. OK, um, sanitation. I don't have a sanitation on my machine, but sanitation tells you if there's a problem with the luminize and I can just touch the S and it tells me it's normal. Blue is normal operation on that sanitation. So on the luminize UV bulb, you could see a red or a red and blue and you can see those those are different problems right red means it's a problem or it's old you should change it red blue means somebody put the wrong bulb in it and it's not functioning correctly so pretty smart little device program mode when you're in program mode i'm going to go back over to my desk for now when you're in program mode you're going to get a little ice cube thing come up here, letting you know it's in some kind of program mode. 
So right now this one's on program mode and it's going to come on in 10 hours and 29 minutes according to the program. So program mode is on. It's going to come on in 10 hours, 29 minutes if they programmed it off. So I've got different colors. Machine off is orange. Machine in ice making mode is blue. And machine in ice making mode program bypass for 24 hours is a green icon on there as well. But everything is very self-explanatory. iAUX system on there. And then we got our easy touch main menu on this machine. So I'm going to press my main menu. I'm going to press energy. I got an energy and I'm going to press ice program. So those were the those were the programs we were talking about in the in the setup in the easy setup on there and a new one for you. So if you don't have the latest software, you're not going to see that night off program on there. That's a new one, so I'm going to touch it and this one says turn off at 10 p.m. Turn off at 6 a.m. And then I can just set the days I wanted to do that. So very, very nice for a hotel. You know, we were going to call it hotel mode for a while, but you know, other places might use off off at night program too for that machine. So we didn't stick to just hotel mode, but that's probably where it's going to be used the most um, in a hotel when it's next to a room or in a corridor like that. I'm going to go back now. I'm going to press service because you're a service technician and you're installing the size machine. And when you can see we have a lot of good information there. Data, alert log, manual harvest, control board in there, diagnostics, contact information, USB in there in case you want to update the software as well. And I'm going to go into settings. This is where I can change my language, my reminders, my time and date. I can change my units and my brightness. Um, I can use my USB to change the settings or I can use my iOx if it's got one, my cleaning, my automatic cleaner, and I can change how often it cleans on that machine as well. So let's go back and reset defaults. We already talked about reset defaults a little bit already, and I can reset defaults if somebody's been playing around in there and programmed it and they didn't really know what they were doing. I can go in there and just reset all those defaults back to where they were on day one on that machine. So I can get that machine up and running by pressing the, the reset defaults on that machine. So that's kind of an overview of it. Machine information, this is cool. I've got model, serial, capacity, uh, when it was built, when it was installed, uh, and to, to burn that install date in there, it has to make 100 batches of ice and then it burns an install date in there. OK, so that's kind of useful. If nobody registered for warranty, I've still got an install built into the machine so I can kind of see what was the install date when it was first made its first 100 batches. Contact information, this is editable. If you don't edit it, you can scan that QR with your phone and it'll take you to our Manitowoc ICE uh, FAS factory authorized service locator and you just type in your zip code and your local factory authorized Manitowoc rep comes up in there, the service company. Now, if you want to edit it, you just click edit info and you put your own name and your company name in there and everything can come up for you in that on that machine. All right, so you can put your own name in here. Oh, bypass interface. This is a good one. So. When we designed this machine, the touchscreen, very durable, very strong, a lot of testing on it, but we didn't really know what somebody might do. Maybe they'll jam a knife into it or a pen or I don't know. You know what people are like? You don't know what they're going to do. And then you'd have to order a new touchscreen. And there's a chance it won't be in stock or that there's a microchip shortage or something crazy like that. <laughs> and it'd take you a while to get one. Um, and you can do a bypass on this machine with it. All you do, unplug the display from the board, unplug the display from the board, power it off, power it back on, uh, wait 30 seconds, and then press that little black button on the board, and it will make seven days of ice before it has to be reset again. So this gives you a bypass mode in case the touchscreen fails. So this is for a service guy. We didn't want to bypass it forever because you know how some customers might be like, well, I'm just not going to get a touchscreen. 
and that's not how the machine's supposed to operate without a touch screen. So it will bypass the touch screen for seven days. Uh, even if they turn it off and on or it goes off on full bin, it's going to get you about seven days of ice with that bypass on it. All right, so you learned today a little bit about the home screen, the main menu and the service and the settings and the reset defaults. You learned about that machine info and that you can program the contact information to you if you'd rather um, it go straight to you rather than go into the Manitowoc ICE locator website. Um, that could be done for you as well. All right, remote CBD, CVD, and by the way, CVD stands for Cool Vapor Defrost because um, quiet cube ice machines don't use a hot gas defrost. It's kind of cool, but you would want to get into that when we do a quiet cube troubleshooting guide. So sometimes they call quiet cubes, sometimes we call them CVDs. Um, but a remote IB unit, ice beverage, it has a bin probe on it that comes with it on that machine. Um, let's fire this ice machine up too. So we're going to press the power button on this ice machine and it will say make an ice and then it will go through its sequence of operation. I'm not going to go through every step of this sequence, okay? But here's some big bullet points for you. Um, nowadays, with the new software, there's a 35 minute maximum freeze cycle. That used to be 60 minutes back in the day. It's been reduced to 35 minutes max. In other words, if the ice probe doesn't see ice for 35 minutes, it goes into a harvest automatically. It says, uh oh, something's not right. I should have seen ice by now and it goes into harvest automatically. OK, so that's kind of new. Seven minute harvest cycles are new too. used to be three and a half. There's seven minutes where they do a water assist on that harvest cycle. If it hits three and a half minutes and it hasn't dropped ice, it'll do a water assist to try and get that ice off the grid. Water fills six minute max fill times two on a single evaporator. Eight minutes times two on a dual evaporator because dual evaporators have much bigger water troughs. So basically what this is saying is if I haven't seen water touch my water probe after six minutes, it should have. I'm going to quit trying and tell you that there's a problem with a water probe, but I'm still going to see if I can still make ice. I'm not just going to keep flooding the bin all day long uh, just because my water probe might not be working. <coughs> bin thermostat, you can add an optional bin level thermostat to any of these Indigo Next Ice machines. It just plugs into the Mr. T5 on the control board, and that will lower the ice level down in the bin if you need it. Maybe you're on a soda dispenser, the ice level is getting too high in that soda dispenser. You can drop that ice level down with this optional bin K00477 universal thermostat kit for this ice machine and check with your dispensers manufacturer uh, on that bin probe. A lot of soda dispensers I found out, Cornelius or Lancer or Servan, uh, some of them require a bin level lowering sensor on the dispenser to keep their warranty in good shape. So check with them and see if one is required. Normally it is. All right, so we looked at sequence of operation. We looked at, sorry, let's go back, equalization. We looked at that whole sequence of operation real briefly. You've got a copy of it though. Uh, there's a 10 minute restart when it goes off on full bin. So when this ice machine goes off on full bin, it has a 10 minute restart. A lot of people are used to three minute restarts. Quiet cubes have a 10 minute restart. So if it went off on full bin and you wiped out the ice, it would be 10 minutes before it came back on. Now, if it went off on full bin an hour ago, and you wipe the ice out, it would come back on immediately. A 10 minute period has got to expire before it's allowed to come back on after a full bin. 10 minutes for a technician, that's a long time. He's going to be like, what's wrong with this machine? Now you can bypass the 10 minute delay by just turning the machine off, turning it back on, and it'll totally bypass that 10 minute delay for you on that machine. So you don't have to wait. Let's take a look at some training here. We have the most amazing training you could get in our industry on Manitowoc ice machines. We have a lot of videos um, put together by Will and put up on our website. They're free, which is crazy. So we have interactive training, but you can see some of the videos we have on our YouTube site as well. 
on how to set things up, how to do things. So we try to keep these videos as short as possible. So, you know, nowadays people have short attention spans. Uh, Gen X, uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Uh, now they have Generation Z, which they, they're starting to call iPad babies, where all babies are grown up with iPads now. Um, and then they're not really old enough to see what difference that's made. But I'm digressing. We have videos on everything now to try and help you out so you can look it up if you need support. You know, rather than calling tech support and, and being frustrated that you have to wait, you can just go right on your smartphone. You can look up a video on how to do it as easily as possible. Next webcast, July 13th, is on traditional remotes. It's confusing, right? We have two kinds of remotes. We have quiet cubes where the compressor is outside. And then we have traditional remotes, which we've made for a very long time, where just the condensing coil is outside. The compressor is still indoors in the ice machine, but just the condensers outside. So you're rejecting heat outside on a traditional, but you're not getting rid of any noise. Uh, quiet cubes, you're getting rid of heat and noise outdoors. So people can get confused that we have two kinds of remotes. So next month, July 13th, we're going to look at traditional remotes on that webcast. Um, also, Coolers coming up. Coolers are quarterly webcast. Next month, July the 15th, we'll look at Coolers again. If you don't know what a cool air ice machine is, um, come to it. It's very interesting. They're very popular, especially in certain areas of the country. Come, come to our webcast. Take a look at that cool air ice machine. So it's quiz time. Scan this code on your phone and it will take you to a link to take the quiz. You can go ahead over there now and do it. Or Will, I'm sure Will is putting the link up in the chat box right now um, for your, so you can click on it. If you're on a computer, click on that link, do the quiz individually so you each get your own certificate out of it um, on that machine. And we really appreciate you coming today. It looks like I'm pretty much on time. <laughs> Let me get some water here. Looks like I'm pretty much on time. Um, I know it's the summer. Things are probably getting jamming pretty quick here. For some reason in Wisconsin, we got like this weird heat wave. We don't normally have above 60 in Julo June, but it's been like 80s uh, lately. So we're all dying here. <laughs> we can't handle we can't handle that kind of temperature. Um, and then when you've done the quiz, you hit make sure you hit submit and you put the right email in for you. OK, and you can fire it up. Uh, so my name is Jonathan here at Manitowoc Ice Training Facility. I'm in the factory school area, and we should be having factory schools in 2022. So keep an eye out for that as long as everything goes OK with COVID. Uh, that's what we're looking for to start in-person training classes again. I can't say that's for sure, but that's what we're going to be looking at in 2022. Uh, so keep an eye on that space as well. Hopefully you can come back next month and join us on our webcast. Do some online training if you get stuck. Uh, it's been a pleasure to instruct you. It's always my passion. My name is Jonathan here, and I will see you next time. Goodbye from me.